<laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome back to For, For the Booze. For the Booze. <laughs> Megan's got a thing where she's got to do the same thing every week. We've I already, do. We've, we've already established this. I know. We've been over this. <laughs> But uh, we're doing something a little different today. We are. We are gonna. We're gonna. Re- we're gonna have a guest on today. Somebody that we haven't had on in a while, and we're gonna. That's right. We're gonna kind of catch up and see uh, where they've been. All right. I'm so excited. So today we have uh, Damien, our old friend from RKB Paranormal. How's it going, man? What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Pretty good. Doing good. Uh, Thank you. More importantly, you're looking pretty sweet with those glasses on. I gotta say, I, I really. That's like, right. I, I like those sunglasses. <laughs> It's not even fucking sunny out, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, that, that makes it even better. So, uh, right. for those of you who don't remember, we talked to him, I don't know, maybe like a year and a half ago. And then, uh, if you want to, I'm pretty sure we've said this before, but if you want to look, there's stuff that he had us on, on RKB Paranormal That's on right. YouTube, which we actually went back and we watched the other night. It was a lot of fun. We did. Yeah. We sat here, right. we watched all the old <laughs> stuff. It was great. Um, but, uh, We've noticed, I was just going to tell you this before, I was like, hold on, but uh, I went back to your YouTube channel, and I, I've noticed that you haven't really put anything out in about a year now, so uh, what's going on with all that? Life is, is going on with that, so... Um, yeah. We get that. <laughs> um, um, over the last, I don't know, probably year or so, the team's pretty much kind of dwindled down to just to me and my, just me and my wife. Oh, um, wow. Like, it's like I said, ever you know, life life happens, and so Josh is, is always super busy with with his new fiance and and oh, and working all the time. So it's kind of it's hard to get him out. And you know, we had a couple other former team members that we just kind of they pretty much just kind of disappeared. Um, one we kind of had to somewhat get rid of for for some reasons, but kind of regretted mm-hmm. getting rid of them. And it's it's a whole long drama filled story. But oh no. Um, it's- Last year we did one, two. We did about five investigations. Three of them at the same location. Um, and I've only me and my wife's only done one this year. Um, but we're wanting to get back out there because we're both dying to get back out there. Yeah, um, I bet. We're, we're trying to possibly looking into some new members, um, trying to recruit some new people, possibly even thinking about completely revamping and changing the name and everything. So wow. just kind of a fresh start on the ground. So that's awesome. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, we, that's where, where's some of the places that you've been to since the last time we talked? Um, like I said, like I told you before we started recording, I had to go back to listen to the first, first time we, we <laughs> chatted to see where I kind of left off. Yeah. Um, and gosh, it's been, it's been like a year and a half year and a half, two years, but I think it was like a couple years at least. Yeah. A yeah. year and a half, two years. Um, when I was listening to the episode, we were fixing to go to the Gaines house in Gainesboro, Tennessee. That was the investigation oh, we were right. fixing to do. Yeah. Um, a couple of weeks after we recorded with y'all, um, that place, it was, it was all right. It was hot as balls because it was in like the middle of June and there's no electricity in the building. So oh. it was, I do not miss the, only thing, the East coast summertime. No, I don't. Um, yeah, it's it's not it's not fun with the, <laughs> with the humidity and all that stuff. Um, that place was kind of, I mean, it was all right. We had some cool rampart activity. Um, we, uh, me, and now a former team member had set up a rampart in this chair, and uh, every time we tried it, we I just set a camera stationary and was just going to record and see see what happened when we were out of the room. And every time we got to the door to walk out of the room, this rim pod would start going off. Oh, wow. And we would walk back over and pretty much tell whatever was interacting with it, hey, stand up out of the chair. And as soon as we ask it to stand up, the rim pod would stop going off. And we're like, okay. So we'd go back over to the door. As soon as we get to the door, it start going off again. Hmm. And it, you can see in the clip when we walk back over, like our our walking isn't causing it to vibrate and go off. Mm. Like we're jumping up and down in this video and stomping around, and every time we try to exit the room, it started going off to like get us to come back over there, and that went on for probably ten minutes. Oh wow! And that was pretty interesting. We caught a couple of interesting EVPs that uh, one sounded like a 
um, that little girl saying, Mama, I'm scared or something like that. Uh, I don't want to hear that. Yeah, right. I don't want to hear that. No, one there. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was, well, it was the old Civil War field hospital. So there ain't no telling what kind of stuff went through that house during that time. So in mm-hmm. like the family living there, that's telling what they could have experienced with all those injured soldiers coming through there. So are there major, uh, are, I can like imagine. are there major claims that they, uh, attached to that property. I know you said it was a civil war, but you know how some places will have like their major stories. What's the, right? that I think the, the main connection is, is it being a civil war okay. field hospital? Okay. I think that's where most of the activity comes from. So, mm-hmm. okay. The, I, don't, I don't recall hearing any stories about the place before, you know, that time. Um, yeah. It, it pretty much everything is linked to the civil war from what I can remember. Okay. I know when I looked on their YouTube, I, I did see that you had some videos um, that you had put up of EVPs. And I think we're going to play them at the end of this. When we let you go, I think we're going to play them at the end. Yeah. Cause that'd be cool. Okay. Um, All right. So you, did you go back there multiple times? No, we just went there once. Okay. Like I said, it was, it it was cool, but like, none of us really got that much excitement out of it. It was kind of one of those boring investigations. I wouldn't be opposed to going back, Mm -hmm. but the building's in really bad shape. That's, that's why they're allowing investigations, trying to raise enough money to kind of start restoring it. Like the back part of the building is like completely caved in. Oh, wow. So that's got to be off limits then, right? Yeah. So there was a part of the house you you can't even access. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that does. For Uh, sure. It's it's crazy because it's like a historic spot, and they have to like raise the money to uh, to bring it back. That's kind of mm-hmm. it's kind of sad. I wish we had more of an emphasis on, um, you know, keeping historic landmarks around than we do because it just seems more and more places are just crumbling away. Well, either crumbling away or they're just getting rid of them all together. Yeah, and it's you know, they're places that would maybe be fun to investigate, whether they have a story or not. Like we were out yesterday looking for ghost towns in our area just to go find something. Yeah. you know, just something cool um right i where where's some of the other places you've been to since the last time we talked you said you went to a few um just about a month and a, about a month after the Gaines house we went down to lynchburg tennessee home of the jack daniels distillery yeah and Ooh. uh we went, we went to an old funeral home down there which was absolutely fucking insane oh um it, it, there was so much happening during that night. I had to put out like four or five parts on YouTube just to kind of fit it all in. Is that instead the of making like? Is that the one you have um, <laughs> different videos of EVPs happening? Because I noticed there was one place that kind of came up a lot, and you had like a minute, yeah, was, ten minute second videos of EVPs. Um, no, all the videos from Lynchburg—they're all everywhere, anywhere from like fifteen to twenty minutes long. Oh wow. What, yeah, what, man, we're gonna have to um, we're watch these. Yeah, we're, watch these. <laughs> we're definitely gonna have to check that out. <laughs> um, just to start that night off, before it even really got good and dark outside, we were kind of just walking through, kind of trying to get a feel for the building. And uh, it was me and Josh, and you know, my wife Kelly was there, and um, uh, a former team member and his girl, uh, his wife was there with us, and we were just kind of walking through, kind of getting a feel of the building, and. We went to walk down this one hallway, and Josh and Kelly just kind of stopped. They're like, there's something in this hall that don't want us to go any farther. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, they're both sensitive to this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, I don't feel anything. I'm gonna, I want to keep going. I'm, you know, and Josh was talking, and then next thing you know, he just kind of zones out. Oh, like, wow. not saying anything. He just kind of, like, hunched up against the wall. And my wife's trying to snap him out of it. And she's like shaking him. He's just not saying anything. He's just like out of it. And we had to get Adam to, to come over. And he's a, a big dude. And he kind of popped him on the arm and snapped him out of it. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Stop being like, weird. He was like, he's like, I don't know what that was. He goes, I just, he goes, I froze. And I just seen a room full of dead people. What? And he's like, that's all I could see. He was like, they were all dressed in dresses and suits like they were at their funeral and he was like they were all trying to talk at once like they were afraid of something oh wow and he didn't know what it was and he was like he's like i'm lightheaded he's like i need to go outside for a minute and so we're trying to walk him back through and i see him kind of holding his back 
And I'm like, are, are you good? And he was like, I was thinking my back kind of hurts. And I lifted up his shirt, and there was probably a, a two inch long scratch going down his wow. back. Wow. Holy crap. And I'm like, I was like, dude, I was like, where did, I was like, where did that come from? And he was like, He's like, well, you know, I did do some training at work uh, yesterday. I was like, no, dude, this this scratch is, is fresh. Like, mm-hmm. It's still like newly. Peaked. Yeah, you can tell when they're and, new because they you they got that red yeah. around them and they raised up. Yeah, yeah, you can tell. Right, and like I said, this all is on video, and you never see him touch his back. Like his hands are by his side, like he's just like slumped over, and it was it was crazy. Like never seen him just this zone out like that before. Wow. That's amazing. How do you top that? Yeah, right. Because <laughs> it's, it's all is that's like the dream, right? Is like it's one thing to to say you saw something or say you heard something, but it's another thing when you have like a physical evidence, right? Like mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. It, it just doesn't happen a lot. Yeah. That, that's not it's not something that happens all the time. So that's it's, it's pretty rad. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> super <laughs> cool. So yeah. is is that the place you went back to multiple times? Nope, that was. We're, we're getting there. I okay. Mean, still more <laughs> we're just going to keep guessing every time. <laughs> there's still more stuff that happened at, at the funeral home. That was just, we weren't even investigating when that happened. That sounds kind like of, we mal- were just walking through. that sounds kind of malicious. Have, has anybody ever reported anything like evil or malicious there? They, there's been several reports. They said that at one point, the family that actually owned the funeral home, they, they claimed uh, his son Supposedly done, try to do like a lot of conjuring and shit oh. in the house. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, the yeah. People that, the people currently that kind of like own it still have the Ouija board that he used, that he supposedly used. Yeah, that's, uh, that's and, crazy. And then <clears throat> later on that night, we were doing um, an Estes method with Adam. First time he had ever done it. And I'm just sitting in the chair in front of him, just recording while they're out in another room asking everything. And and on about 10 minutes in, he just kind of freaks out and pulls the, the blind foot off. He's like, fuck this, I'm done. I'm like, I was like, what, ha- what happened? He's like, dude, something started pulling on the cord of the headphones. What? A lot of physical stuff. And I'm yeah. like, of course, I didn't, I couldn't tell it then, but when I went back and reviewed the video a couple of days later, you can see, barely see it, but you can see the, uh, the cord on the headphones tug just a little bit. And he doesn't move, at, he's not moving at all. Wow. And... That freaked him out. Yeah, I bet. We're doing, we decided to send Josh upstairs by himself. Um, he's upstairs by himself. We're all downstairs. And uh, after about 10 minutes, I get on the radio. I'm like, I, I'm like, hey, how, how's it going up there? And he's like, he's like, it's been quiet until now. He's like, the REM pod's going off. And I'm like, oh, let me come up here and check it out. We, we eventually debunked the REM pod being the radio setting it off. Okay. Okay. Um, I was going to bring that up earlier. I was going to ask. Yeah. It, it didn't click with us for a couple of minutes mm-hmm. because like it stopped when we got up there and I was like, of course it would stop. But then I was like, wait a minute. I was like, I think it may have been the radio. But when we got up there, as soon as we walked in the room, he had the rim pod set up in the chair. He had, and he had the, uh, our EMF detector like propped up in the chair. And as soon as we walked in that room, the, the EMF detector went flying off the chair. It, it flew off the chair. Flew off the fucking chair, dude. Wow. And Josh was recording the camera he had, and he caught it on video. And of course, you know, we try to debunk it. And, you know, we set it back up. We mm-hmm. were like, okay, old building, old floorboards, us coming up the stairs probably vibrated it off. So we set it back up exactly how it was. And I walk around this chair seven, eight times. I'm jumping up and down, and it never budges. I mean, I'm I'm a pretty never I'm moved. I'm a pretty skeptical person, Damien, but I have never seen a floorboard creak so hard that it throws something. Yeah, but hey, good job trying yeah. to debunk it for sure. <laughs> so you know that that was right there in the middle of the night. And then it kind of in the night we uh we did another Estes session with Josh going under, and we were using the SLS camera we had at the time, and we captured. What looked like a little animal sitting beside him. Okay. Like it was like a little dog standing beside him. And what's crazy about it is the the, the owners of this funeral home, all their pets they they owned that passed away, they buried them out in the side yard, like full on headstones for them and everything. Oh wow! So there was like a little small pet cemetery right out behind the house. Cre- that's creepy. Yeah, and, that's really creepy. If anybody knows that <laughs> movie, that's yeah, creepy. I know that, like, <laughs> 
so like I said, that was a pretty active night, almost all night long. Like something was going on and it was, it was pretty cool. What's the, what's the name of that place? We might have to do an episode on that. Yeah. That sounds good. It's called, I mean, what is, everybody knows it by is Lynchburg's Haunted Home. So I'm sure if you Google just Lynchburg's Haunted Home, you'd probably find. Okay. Now the people that own that, cause you said that there were like ties to the sun doing like seances, seances and shit and stuff cool. like that. Are, is that family still alive? Um, I know the son is. I don't know about the original owners, but the son is still alive. Oh, okay. so so the guy who was doing it is still around. Yeah, they said that he actually had came there a couple of different times just to like talk to him and stuff. They had kept his room like how it was when he lived there as a teenager. That's there was so like creepy. posters of Marilyn Manson. Hanging, there was like posters of Marilyn Manson hanging on the wall and shit. What? Um, I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not afraid of that. Yeah. I like that kind of music. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. I mean, I do too. But like. You know, that link in Marilyn Manson to oh, yeah. anything that he was automatically going to think bad stuff about the person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was apparently doing bad shit anyway, but. Yeah. It, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. He could have been listening to John Denver doing that, but yeah. Right. I know what you're saying. <laughs> it, does, it makes it a little more unsettling. I yes. get it. <laughs> right. Now. But no, that's definitely a place I would, I'd love to go back to because it was just so active the, the night we went and, uh. And like I said, that's been a couple of years ago and we've crafted our style a lot in those two years. Yeah. And so, and then just a month later, we went right across the road to the old jail across the road from the funeral home. Oh, cool. And, uh, jail. That one, it was just me and Josh. It was kind of one of those nights where not a whole lot happened. Mm-hmm. Um, we did capture what sounded like a cell door slamming when we were outside. Um, we decided to take a break and we left the camera rolling. Um, EMF detector kept spiking. And then we hear what sounds like a cell door slamming. Um, had some really rad stuff come through on the necrophonic that are kind of making sense to what we were asking. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a boo bear that we had, you know, one of those. Oh, yeah. 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 We know what those are. <laughs> we had it just sitting out in the hallway. Didn't even have it turned on. Hadn't used it all night long, and we start kept hearing this beeping noise. What, what is that noise? And we eventually tracked it to this boo bear in the hallway going on that we didn't even have turned on. Wow, that's yeah, very interesting. Yeah, that's unsettling. Yeah, I don't think I would like that. You know, you never really know how you're going to react to things like that happen like this until I guess you're in the moment. Right. I, don't, I don't know if I would deal with that well. <laughs> I think once things that are off start coming on, I'm out. It's time to go home. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it sounds like you guys have, you know, you've done more than I thought you did, to be honest with you. So. Uh, now, that was all in one year. And there were still two or three more places we went to in that year. I'm very fascinated by this funeral home. I'm yes. not going to lie. That's, uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> Same. That's pretty incredible. Uh, you don't hear a lot of people say, like, <laughs> you see people on and TV. It was at stuff, one but. point. It was and also at one point was set up as it, it would not it was at one point actually set up as like a haunted house attraction oh. as well. And there were still props from the haunted house in there. Oh, so um, how was that walking around at, not, in the dark? <laughs> right. There was, I think in the, in the son's room, I think there was a, a big tall stand up of like Hannibal Lecter sitting in the corner. Oh, absolutely so, not. <laughs> no. Well, that was really, What's really rad is when you first walk in there, they have an actual like metal coffin that they use like way back in the day when like there was like a car accident on the road. That's what they took and loaded the body's parts up in and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they have an actual coffin that that was used to to gather up bodies and body parts from like road accidents and stuff like way back when. And it was the actual coffin? Yeah. That's really gross. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> that is really gross. I'd be like, "Hey, Megan, stand you... inside of it." Nope. <laughs> mm. Nope. Oh man. So tell us about some of the other places you've been. I mean, I, I feel like I could talk about the funeral home for a while because it's really cool. But what about some of the other places you've been to? Um, just a couple months after that, we went back uh, for round two of the historic Scott County Jail, where we captured that picture flying off the wall. Mm. The scream um, heard round the world. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, so we, we ended up going back there, and uh, me and Josh and my wife, she didn't get to go the first time, and then my sister-in-law went. So it was four of us this time. Um, it wasn't as active as it was the first time we were there, but we did have um, 
some interesting things. My wife kept feeling like there was somebody rushing up on her. Um, mm. She felt that several times on the top floor. Uh, we ended up doing an SS method session in that hallway where the pitcher flew. Okay. Um, and when I asked, um, you know, who, who knocked the pitcher off the way, it did give us a name. I'd have to go back and, and watch, but it did give us the name. Um, and it gave us the name when we asked who the woman was asking for help. That girl was to the hallway that, at that, at that time. Um, and something, I don't think they told us the first time, but they told us the second time that on the second floor, they seem to get a lot of responses when you start playing gospel music. Mm, I was like, you know, hell, we'll, we'll try it. So while Josh was doing under with the blindfold and stuff on, I turned on some gospel music on my phone. And it probably wasn't 45 seconds after I turned this music on. I still I started feeling dizzy and nauseous. And I'd been fine the entire night. Wow. And like to the point where I dropped down to my knees because I thought I was about to pass out. Oh I was like, we got to turn this music off. Turned the music off and gave it a few minutes. I started feeling a little bit better. I was like, let's turn it back on. Turned it back on, same thing. I started feeling dizzy, started feeling nauseous. And I'm like, I was like, I'm done with this. I was like, I, I can't. I was like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know if whatever's up here is pissed off because we're playing this because I turned it on or what it is. I was like, but I was like, I can't keep playing this because like it's it, like I literally thought I was going to pass out. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. You, you, I, I remember talking to you about that location because uh, you were telling me because I went back and I watched the video of the hand. I've probably seen that video a hundred mm-hmm. times. Yeah, I remember Mm -hmm. you guys had went before you even, like, put the video out on YouTube. You sent that clip to us, and you were like, you guys have got (laughs) to see this. (laughs) It's honestly how, it's it's honestly how, like, I knew you for a while. I was like, yeah, it's the scream. It was awesome. (laughs) I I love that video. I I have noticed, though, you've got new videos out. There's a longer one that I think we're going to watch after this. Uh, It's it's like a full, I'm guessing it's a full investigation. I I just looked through it real quick. It was like an hour and 20 minutes or something. It's an hour and a half. Yeah. The Hotel Metropolitan up in Paducah, Kentucky, and that night was insane. We were too. in Paducah. We, we went through Paducah. In Paducah at the, the Paducah time loop. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> on our way here, we we're on our cross country journey to from Florida to Utah, and we just stopped there randomly to use the restroom. They had like a little welcome center, and they had this like roundabout. roundabout. But it's huge. But it was huge, and it was very very weird. And <laughs> and Megan was driving and couldn't figure out how to get off of it, so we went around this circle like six <laughs> times, and we so we. Nicknamed it the Paducah Time Loop. <laughs> That's so funny. So where was this, or what was this place? We know where, but what was it? It's called the, it's called the Hotel Metropolitan. So this little hotel was built back in 1909 by an African American lady, okay. and mm-hmm. she built it specifically for African Americans to stay at when they were traveling through. Because you know, way back then, everything yeah. was segregated. It was yeah. different times of segregation. And so she right. Wanted, yeah. She wanted. She wanted a place in her in her town for for African Americans to come and stay while they're traveling, and that's amazing. It got super popular, like to the point where there was musicians staying there, there was athletes staying there. Um, so it was a rad place like to they stay. Had, <laughs> yeah, they had they had um the different rooms um like where people stayed. They had like this was the BB King room. BB King stayed in this room. Dude, I gotta this was go the there. Richard room. Um, this was the little Richard room. Little Richard stayed in this room. This was the Tina Turner room. Tina Turner stayed in this room. Um, so me and my wife went up there the night before. Um, it's, it's actually a bed and breakfast as well. Um, it's a bed and breakfast and like kind of like a, a black history museum. And so we went up there the night before because we just wanted to kind of have a night to ourselves just to relax and everything. Mm-hmm. And it was about maybe a three, three and a half, four hour drive from the house. And so we just went up the night before. And we figured even with it being a bed and breakfast, we thought somebody would be staying there with us. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, because it's still kind of like a hotel. So we figured somebody might be on the property with us. So we get there, meet the owner. She gives us a walkthrough. When we're walking through the kitchen, there's a door in the kitchen that pops open right in front of us. On its own? Just... She, just on its own. And she's like, yeah, she goes, that's why, you know, I don't like being here by, by myself at night because stuff like this just... <laughs> It, it freaks me out. Oh my god! And she's, an older, and she's an older black lady, and so, so she's like, she gave us our walk through, walked us around. She goes, "Here's the keys. Here's the alarm code. If y'all leave, please be sure to set the alarm." I'm like, "Oh, okay." So we're here by ourselves tonight. 
as soon as she leaves, we go straight to that door. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I was going to say that's that's when you look at your wife and you're like, "We'll do we'll do the adult sexy time later." But right now, we're alone. <laughs> we gotta go check this out. <laughs> As soon as she walked out the door, we locked the front door, went straight to the kitchen to try to figure out why this door opened. And it was a door to another bathroom. I think it just had a toilet and a sink in there. Mm-hmm. So we close it. You know, we're jumping up and down. We're walking in front of it. We're stomping in front of it. We're banging on the wall. Never opens. Wow. This door comes into play again the following night. So that was really the only thing that happened that night. My wife did say throughout the night when we were sleeping, she kept getting the the sense that somebody was standing at our bedroom door just kind of looking at us. Mm. Oh, no, I don't like that. And I'm like, well, I was like, you know, it's, you know, a a mostly black hotel. There's two white people sleeping in there. They're probably wondering what the hell we're doing in there. Yeah, they're like, excuse me, what what are you doing? (laughs) Because they're they're in their time. That was their place, not yours. Yeah. Right. So it was just like, I was like, oh, you know, no big deal. And so the next day, um, one of our uh, now former team members came up. And so it was just us three there the entire night. And for the first 45 minutes, like it was kind of dead, like nothing was really happening. Nice pun. And I was like, you know I was like, we got to do something to kind of see if we can get some something stirred up. I was like, let's play some music of some people that stayed here. Mm hmm. So I pull up my phone, I turn on a BB King song and we have the SLS going pointing like in this uh, dining room. And as soon as this music turns on, these two figures map in a tall one and a short one. And it kind of looks like they're dancing to the music. Hmm. Um, That's, you know, that's pretty rad. And so song turns off, they both disappear right as the song ends. Wow. And I'm like, you know, could be a false positive, whatever. Let's turn on another song. We turn on like a more upbeat song. I think it was Ray Charles, maybe, because he's a hit state there. Turn on another song. As soon as the song turned on, both those figures popped up again. Wow. Tall and short one. Looked like they were dancing to the music. Looked like, looked like the tall one was kind of tapping his foot, and it looked like the small one was kind of like doing like the twist or something, just kind of sh- just breaking it down. <laughs> as soon as the song... As soon as the song stops, they both disappear. Wow, that's cool. And so, oh man, there's so much to tell from this night. Um, later on, we were kind of taking a break, and Ted, our other member who had came up, he was going to that kitchen to get him something to drink. And so I'm still filming, because Kelly's, we're taking a break, but we're still investigating, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... I hear, I don't remember what it was. It sounded like a man behind me talking. Like, Ted was kind of behind me in the kitchen. But, like, we were, like, far apart where I wouldn't really heard him talk unless he was talking loud. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that was weird. And then I heard him say, he screams out, holy fuck, like, screams it. And we take off running in there, and that door had opened right in front of it. (gasps) Oh, man. And so before... You know, of course, we tried to debunk it again, and it didn't happen. Later on that night, he was in there. He walked in there by himself, and he's trying to get it to open again. He was like, you know, you've done it earlier. You know, can you do it for me one more time while I'm asking you to do it? And we stood in there for 20 minutes trying to get this door to open, and it wouldn't open. Mm. So it opened two different times, um, and probably the wildest thing is we were doing the S's up in the – the the uh, second floor. I'm in the middle of the hall, blindfolded, can't see anything, can't hear anything other than the the spirit box going off. My dumb ass forgets to turn the night vision on. <gasps> no. Which, uh... which, which really upset me because what I'm about to tell you. Oh man! Of course, this is so, like when you catch the best. Yeah, thing of ever. course, the the greatest thing no, happens. I'm going, so I'm going back, you know, a few days later and reviewing everything. And of course, when I get to that part, I was like, God damn it. I was like, I didn't turn the night vision on. And halfway through the S's session, the left side of my body gets freezing cold. And I, I say, I was like, I was like, my body's getting cold. Right after I say that, it feels like something kind of rubs me on my left arm. Mm-mm. And I out, I was like, something's touching me. And it wasn't 15, 20 seconds later, it felt like it started poking me on the arm. 
And I'm like, something, I was like, it's poking me now. So a couple minutes later, when I'm reviewing this, you hear Ted and my wife Kelly in the background asking the questions. And you hear Ted, uh, Ted say, are you pop? And my wife kind of whispers, who's pop? And then right there at the camera, you hear somebody whisper, that's not my name. <gasps> no what? way. Clear, clear as fucking day, dude, I swear. You just clear telling that story gave me goosebumps. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Oh, that wow. Is, that's insane. Clearest EVP we've ever captured, and we've been even doing an EVP session. It was it was captured during the SS session on our on our camcorder. Well, hey, good thing. Well, and you caught you don't, it. You don't need night vision to capture EVPs. And he caught it. <laughs> I mean, that's better than like what, if they just what, heard it, but yeah. they caught it. But what upsets me about it is, I'm sitting in my head. I'm thinking, if that night vision would have been on, would I possibly captured whatever was touching me? Mm-hmm. But like I said, it wasn't a total waste because uh, you know we captured that EVP. That yeah. like I said, it was clear. As day. That's cr- that's clear as day. creepy. That is so crazy. I, oh, that's weird. <laughs> I don't, don't like that. <laughs> I always say I don't like that, but I think I'd be pretty excited if it happened. Yeah, I know. It's just the thought of like, especially like I'm sitting in a basement. Yeah. If I heard that now, I'd be freaked out. Just like a whisper in your <laughs> yeah, ear. Just a but anyways, we're gonna take a we, we got to take a quick ad break but we will be right back we will and now booze crew back to our interview (laughs) okay so now we're back and we did anything else happen i mean i hate to ask that because so much <laughs> has happened at this place so far so but did did you catch anything else cuz so far it's been incredible i i'd be talking more but i can't like i'm 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 very intrigued by this stuff <laughs> right like i said there was so much that that happened it, it it was ended up being an hour and a half long video but it wasn't just the good stuff we included we we wanted to include what actually we actually do do an investigation, even the stuff that people don't find exciting. Mm-hmm. So there may have been 10 minutes of us just sitting in the hallway asking questions and nothing's happening. Like I wanted to start including that stuff in our videos. So it's not just the quote unquote good stuff that people see. Mm. I agree. Because, it you it know, makes a lot it, of people. It's more realistic. Yeah. Well, it makes like, it like a real full investigation. It, yeah. You're not, right. you're not building of, of like a false hope of like it's constant activity constant right. activity and i think people need to do that more. yeah that's often. smart yeah right because a lot of these you know like the tv shows for instance they they portray it as there's constant stuff happening right and even some of the more well-known youtube channels present it that that way as well and i'm like dude it don't happen that way i was like we've had several investigations where you know i'll go through eight or nine hours of evidence and like we don't capture a thing mm-hmm. yeah we, t- we talk real, about this all yeah the but, time. but that's the real side of it is like it, you can't show up at a location and be like all right spirits perform do your thing right, right. you know it's 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 right. just you're there at the right time and you know the right night and it just happens and i don't think people understand that which is why i think a lot of these fake youtube channels do so well because they've created this narrative of like the monkeys will dance when you want them to and it's just not how it goes and they they like we talk about too like especially for uh youtube and stuff they should have to mark like uh for entertainment purposes only yeah like it's a movie thing to Mm -hmm. separate that oh my god constant you know we make it all kind of happen yeah like ghost adventures thing to like like people like you guys who like go in and do like real investigations and like you know try your hardest through hours of stuff that where nothing happens yeah that's just how that's the reality of it so so that leads us the the end of september okay so um so in between that we uh we did our first paranormal convention which i actually mentioned on the the previous episode Mm -hmm. um we did that. It went over really well. Like it Yay. was like it, uh, the people that put it on actually did another one, um, last year and it was even bigger. We didn't get to attend that one, but this, we had some other stuff going on, mm-hmm. but it was, met a lot of people and I actually sat there and chatted with like people walking by more than I figured I would. Um, so that went over really well. Um, and then just about a week later, 
we were featured in American Paranormal Magazine. Hell yeah. Um, Stop. Congratulations. Which, yay. Man, that's awesome. Congrats. <laughs> which was really cool. Um, and then to end the year, we uh, we went up again to Kentucky to Cynthia, Cynthia, Kentucky, Cynthiana, something like that. The oh, Rose really? Opera House. I feel um, like I've heard of that. Rose yeah. Opera it's still an operating theater. You know, they, they show movies there. They perform plays there. Um, they have ghosts there. So <laughs> we got in, we got in at 10 o'clock at night and we had it. We actually had it all night. We could have left at seven o'clock that morning. Um, I think we finished at about three cause we were just getting, we were tired, mm. but, uh, it was a pretty active night too. Um, it was my wife, my sister-in-law, my son, who I'm actually waiting on to come out from work right now, um, and and Ted was with us too. So it was five of us this night, and so I don't even remember. It was, oh, the first thing that happened that I remember happening. Um, it was weird because when the guy was giving us kind of our walkthrough, kind of telling us some of the history and telling us some of the paranormal type stuff, he had told us about something that happened in the actual main like auditorium. And I was standing up on the stage. Um, Ted and Jake were sitting like out in a couple of the chairs. My wife was in front of the stage and my sister-in-law was like over to the side of the stage, mm. like facing the same direction I was. And I see this big, bright blue ball of, of light just floating down one of the aisles. Mm. And I'm like, holy shit. I was like, like, I didn't know what, I was like, holy shit. And she got my sister-in-law, she goes, did you see that too? And I was like, yeah. I was like, what did you see? She goes, I think that big ball of blue light. That was something he had told us that people see in there. Wow. And so, of course, you know, my first thing is, okay, there's got to be some kind of outside source of light coming through that we're not seeing. There's no windows in this auditorium. There's no light shining coming through, peeking through the a crack of the exit door. The only sliver of light that was coming through was through the entrance curtain. So it's and dark. So it's real dark. Mm-hmm. Super dark in there. And this was a big, bright blue orb of light. Wow. And like it was about the height of probably a six foot tall person, like they were walking down the aisle going to their seat. No way. And it came down it came down to probably about the third row then just disappeared. Wow. That's the, really theaters cool. always use, seem to be very active. We've covered, yeah. like, we've talked about a few theaters, and they mm-hmm. always seem to have really good evidence there. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of, it's an emotional place. You know, P, actors are emotional people, so they get attached to it, and they love it. But Yeah, and, the, and they're putting on shows to try and make their audience be emotional yeah. along with them, too. So it makes so sense. So but crazy. it's weird. This mm-hmm. So th- in this place is still, uh, you know, in business, and they're still showing stuff today. That's uh, a... Yeah. I I don't know how I would feel about seeing a big blue ball of light. How do you not? Think, how do you not shit your pants? Easier than voices <laughs> and touching, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'd constantly be on edge if I saw a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I'm not saying I would run out, but I feel like I would be on edge. So yeah, you know, hats off to you guys for not running. <laughs> right. Uh, and then a little while later, we're we're still in the auditorium, and. uh, this was around Christmas time, so they had the the stage set up like a Christmas scene. Like there was a big Christmas tree up there. There was like a fake chimney and stuff like that. There was a big red, I guess, was like their Santa chair on the stage. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sitting in the very back row. I'm just kind of observing what the rest of the crew's doing. And my wife is sitting in that chair. Um, I think her sister's on the stage and and the other two were standing in front of the stage and there were these three uh, candles on the fireplace, like fake candles. Um, and I seen one of them light up and I'm like, I was like, it was, I was like, was that fucking, has that light been on this whole time? They turn around and they're like, what? And they're like, no. And I was like, well, one of those candle lights just turned on. And so I go down there and I'm like, this hasn't been on the right. And they're like, no, it has not been on. It was one of the kind where you had to twist the bulb to get it to turn on. Like okay. that's how you turned it on was twisting the bulb. Uh-huh. And so, of course, you know, I barely untwisted it, turned it, get it to turn back off, tried to debunk it, and never came on. 
Wow. Later on that night, later on that night, we're back in there and my wife had made a comment. Gosh, it's just so dark in here. It, it's really hard to see. And I shoot you not about 10 seconds later, that same candle came back on. Stop. That same candle comes back on and they, they one of the claims in the auditorium was there's a couple of little kids that were, that are in the auditorium. So my wife was like, that's gotta be one of the kids, you know, ha- trying to help out so I could see better. Mm-hmm. And it, as soon as he said it was dark, that light turned back on that exact same candle. And there was nobody on the stage at that time. Wow. That's really cool. That reminds me a lot of like the, uh, the flashlight method that people use, like where they'll mm-hmm. untwist the back of the flashlight yeah. and you know, they, all they have to do is kind of touch it and barely make a connection for it to work. That's what that reminds me of. Yeah. That's really cool. It also reminds me of the lights we used to have in the apartment that used to turn on by themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Those were weird. <laughs> they were just like these ones up here. Yeah, they were like little remote-controlled candles, and but yeah. they had a remote. These ones we turn on individually, right. but, yeah, but they would just, not all of them, they, just like one yeah. or two would just It'd be like one, one, one night on. it'd be two of the three, one night it'd be one of the three, uh, one night it'd be all three. It was no. weird. It would always happen, though. <laughs> you it kind of in that night. I didn't actually experience this because I was up upstairs with Ted, but my wife and her sister and, and our son was down back in the auditorium and we hear them scream. We're like, what the fuck just happened? So we run downstairs. We're like, what, what's, what's going on? Mm-hmm. They're like, dude, they're like, I don't remember what they said. They asked, I don't remember what it was, but they heard like a bang. And then they heard like this loud, cackling like witch laugh oh no Ugh. no and it scared the teetotal piss out of them that's, <laughs> you know, that's why they screamed. and of course they they weren't recording at the time because they were getting ready to like walk out and they because we were getting ready to wrap up for the night i think what it was i think jake said thank you for letting us be here and merry christmas or something like that and this loud like witch laugh just came out of nowhere uh-uh. nope yeah <laughs> no <laughs> That's crazy. And that's crazy, too, that they weren't recording, so they didn't, like, get it captured, but it, like, it 100% happened. I, no. Right, because they were all, mm. like, yeah, they're, like, they were, and my wife, like, she wouldn't be one to make up something like that. Mm-hmm. And she was, like, she goes, I swear, she goes, it was a loud, like, cackling witch-type laugh. Ugh. I was, like, and I was, like, and nobody was recording. That was my, I was, like, nobody was recording. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, God damn it. God damn it. Like, what are y'all doing? So, right. So, you know, that, that wrapped up our 2022. And to start 2023, we were featured on the cover of American Paranormal Magazine. Oh Congratulations. That's, I didn't even know that. That's doubly yeah. amazing. <laughs> wow. wow. So, yeah, we was on the cover and featured, uh, I think, on a four-page spread. So that was... Wow. You know, that was a pretty rad on too. So that's amazing. That is um, that fantastic. Was, uh, that was like the uh, that was the all Tennessee edition. So everything in that edition was nothing but things from Tennessee. So we were the first ones to grace the the t- all Tennessee edition. So wow, you, you guys were like the Tennessee group. Yeah, that's awesome. Guess, that's so. super cool. <laughs> that's super cool. And I thought our little article that we had yeah, in a, a Tampa magazine was cool, but that's amazing. <laughs> that's cool, man. Uh, you, yeah, no, that's, I, mean, I have I to find that. Three, three newspaper articles written about us. Wow. In twenty twenty two. So. So twenty twenty two was a like twenty twenty two early twenty twenty three. That was a big year for you guys. Yeah, and twenty twenty three started out that way. And then it just kind of, that's when life kind of happened and it yeah. kind of just drifted. With, um, but it started out with a bang too. We, you know, I was doing that podcast with us still, I'm on hiatus, but doing life beyond six feet. Um, Cause I kind of got really burnt out on doing it. Cause I was, I did like almost 13 months of like nonstop recording. Yeah. Oh wow. So I really, I really got burnt out doing it. Mm-hmm. And when I was doing my third season, I was having a lot of guests cancel last minute and it was just really frustrating me. Yeah, um, it's very hard to so do an interview driven podcast because I said this because before this podcast, I had a podcast where I had people come on and it's mm-hmm. it's no longer just dependent on you. It's mm-hmm. dependent on an outside right. source that you can't control. And it's it's hard, man. So I, I give you credit for going as long as you did, because it is it's hard. 
Yeah. So, um, the, um, I think it was a second episode of season three. We did our first live episode. Um, cause we had, uh, wanted to go back to a place up in Kentucky. We went to in 2021, the, the uh, old stone jail, they had, a. Uh, reached back out to us like, Hey, would you guys be interested in coming back up? You know, cause mm. I'd ask them if they wanted to be guests on the show, like the people that kind of run, run everything up there. And they're like, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. We'll, we'll be happy to come on. And like a couple, like a, the week of the recording, um, like a few days before one of them reached us, like, Hey, you know, a couple of us are really sick, but I, and I want the whole team to be a part of this. Is there any way we can reschedule? I was like, yeah, just you know, let me know when you're available and everybody's feeling good. We'll 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 get it going. He's like, Well, how about this? How about you guys come up here, come to the jail, we'll do a live stream interview, and then you guys can investigate afterwards free of charge. Wow, that's I'm like, so cool. I'm like, you you sold me on free. So. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, so we do this live stream interview of uh of, of the team. Whis- whiskey Tango Foxtrot Paranormal, WTF Paranormal. Okay. And uh, so we do the interview with them, and then we investigate the jail afterwards. And the first time we were there, it was one of those, no pun intended, dead nights. Like, nothing yeah. was going on. Um, second go around, we captured some pretty wild stuff. Um, and I, I, ne- I didn't have the time to sit down and make any kind of episodes, but I did the, the two really cool things we captured. I did put out like TikTok clips of, mm. um, like both happened during an S's method session. We had Josh in a cell. He was handcuffed, blindfolded, had leg shackles on. Like he couldn't, he was bound. Yeah. He, he would, couldn't move. And so, you know, we're out there at, in the hallway asking questions and we just hear this random song play. Like, where the fuck that song come from? And all of our phones are on airplane mode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I have everybody pull their phones out afterwards just to make sure, and everybody's phones is on air. So there's no way anybody's phone could have just played a song. Right. And it was such a quick clip of a song, even if somebody's phone wasn't on airplane. The time it took it to get it out of their pocket, get their phone turned on, probably punched in their passcode, get to the app to turn, it would have played for, you know, six, seven seconds at least. Mm -hmm. This was like a second. It was a country song and it goes just a swinging. Oh. Really weird. But when I'm going back and reviewing it, right before that, my wife asked, who's up here with us? Josh comes through and says, boys. Right after he says, boys, it says just a swinging. My mm. wife goes, what if, they, what if they were referring, my wife's like, what if they're referring to somebody that was hung? Yep, mm-hmm. that's exactly where her mind went. And he looked at me and I knew that's exactly where his mind well, went I to. I mean, I don't want to, I have to, I don't want to be a cheater. I've actually talked to Damien about this. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I have We've had a conversation about this. <laughs> well, I haven't. I do a it was stuff. really random because he was like, boys, and that song comes through. So it was boys just a swinging. And then after the session was over, we were telling Josh about the song that played during his his session. Mm -hmm. And I'm holding the spirit box in my hand. The spirit box was dead. We didn't even use the spirit box. He used the the necrophonic on his phone. Mm -hmm. The spirit box starts, like, going off. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, the spirit box wouldn't even turn on earlier. And, like, it's doing the staticky thing. And, like, I'm hitting the power button, holding the button, like, punching all these buttons. It will not turn off. Like, I have to physically take the batteries out just to get it to stop. Wow. And it was it was pretty weird. That's, yeah, that's pretty wild. Yeah. I really like the swinging story, though. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it's really crazy. So we're, we, so, we're coming up close to an hour. So I wanted to get, I wanted to touch on this. What is the, mm-hmm. what is the future looking like? for you and like i said we're uh at the moment it's pretty much just me and my wife and we've been talking for a while of kind of rebranding everything we want to keep keep it dedicated to keith because you know rkb was keith's initials we yeah, still want to keep it dedicated to him yeah um so I, I, we've tossed around a couple of ideas um 
like I said, we're possibly looking at adding a few people. And even if we don't add new members, we're, we're going to have to have people go with us for cost and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, right, now, right now I'm doing a monthly podcast um, with a, I think you guys were actually on the Paranormal Roundtable with two of them. Yeah, yeah. On, we were. On the, so with Gil um, and Joey from the Black Cat Report okay. and Kristen Amanda from the Paranormal Girl, we do a monthly podcast called Beer, Booze, and Boogeyman. Okay. Oh, wow. And it's monthly, we do it the first Saturday of the month, and this came about from, like, our group chat. Like, we all became really good friends, especially after that roundtable. Mm-hmm. And just started a group chat with each other and we just talked about some random shit and one day just popped in my head. I was like, you know, what if we just did a podcast with like all of us together? Like, you know, you have your show, you have mine. We all have our different shows. Well, we just came together and just did another show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. We'll, and we tossed around some ideas and Gil actually just, I think being goofy tossed out the name. He's like, yeah, we can call it beer, booze and boogeyman. Ha ha. I was like, but I was like, actually, I was like, that's fucking perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. I was like, I love it. I was like, you know, the beer portion. So all of us has some kind of paranormally themed beer with us each episode. Okay. That we're drinking on throughout the episode. Mm-hmm. And, and each episode is like our first episode was about, um, what was it about? I've done forgot. Um, I totally went blank. Episode two was about strange lights. I know that. Oh, okay. okay. All right. <laughs> like phantom lights and stuff. So phantom lights, um, lights in the sky, just any kind of lights you couldn't explain. And so we do it a live stream show and we have people, people can submit stories for us to read on air, they can submit recorded messages for us to play on air, or they can call in live and actually talk to us and tell their stories during the show. That's really I'm going to cool. stop you. I forgot to send mine in, and I am sorry. What? <laughs> we had a deal. He sent Boo. a story, and I was supposed to send one in, and it was around the time we got our new phones. <laughs> Boo. And I forgot. So my apologies. <laughs> I will still do this for you, though. <laughs> It's all good. Um, <laughs> I'm a terrible person. Like I said, we've done, we've done, we've done four episodes so far. Our fifth episode is coming up next weekend. Um, this one actually, I don't know. I've never watched him, but uh, Gil and Kristen are both huge fans of Art Bell. Okay, mm-hmm. I know who um, he is. Yeah. So Gil kind of got this idea from him. He would do segments occasionally called Truth or Trash, mm-hmm. where people would call in and. and tell a story and then other callers would have to determine if they think it's real or fake. So we're wanting people to call in and just tell like their most outrageous stories. Mm -hmm. And then we're just kind of, kind of let people vote in the, in the YouTube chats and then have the caller eventually reveal if it's a true story or if it's something they just made up right there on the spot. So we're hoping it goes over well. Like I said, we've, Everything's been really well received so far. We've gotten a lot of compliments, a lot of call-ins. Um, and like I said, not a lot of shows do live streams anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. And when they do, when they do, it's just them talking to a guest. Like, we're involving the listeners. Yep. And I think that's kind of what's what's gotten a lot of people you know, turned on by it. So It's like a, it's almost like an old, like a... Um... Like an older radio show. Yeah, like an old school like, radio show. Yeah, that's so like cool. We'll definitely have to check that out. We'll check it out right after this, yeah. as a matter of fact. I think I came across that, and I didn't know what it was, and I kept going. I think it was when I was looking for the old videos of us mm-hmm. um, doing the Paranormal Roundtable and stuff. So we'll, yeah. have to, we'll have to check that out. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So, so this is all on It's all on YouTube. Uh, where, where can they find this if they want to watch it or listen or whatever? Um. Uh, the actual show has their own YouTube. It's Beer, Booze, and Boogeyman on YouTube. Okay. Um, we have a TikTok. We have a Facebook. We have an Instagram. And the Black Cat Report and the Paranormal Girl podcast, they actually they stream it on their YouTubes, and they eventually post the videos there, too. So you have multiple ways to watch it and listen to it because we all upload it to our platforms, too. So, like, oh, you okay. type in Beer, Booze, and Boogeyman on Spotify, you either find the official Beer, Booze, and Boogeyman channel, or you'll find it the paranormal girl or the black cat report. So we have it multiple ways. And if anybody wants to actually submit a story, all they got to do is go to ghost dot beer 
and it has all the links to the write in and stuff like that. So, so oh, super cool. So if you're a listener of the show, go not only go back and and, and listen to Damien's podcast, which yes. was I loved your podcast. I thought it was a great yes, show, super good. And you had us you. you had Thank us you. on there before, and it makes it even better. <laughs> but we encourage right. you guys go support them, watch them on YouTube. You know, join in because there's not a lot of people doing this, and, yeah. and I think that's awesome. I think what you guys are doing is great. But I thank you. We appreciate. It. Oh, I guess this is this is we're going to end this. It's, I it's think been so about too. an hour. I know your your son's going to be coming out soon. But Damien, I appreciate you coming on. We haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much for coming on. It's been nice catching up with you. And I I'll send it out there again. <laughs> we'll wait some more time and we'll have you back on again. Yeah, <laughs> see where see what the next little bit holds for you. Hopefully, I'll have some more stories to tell you. I'm sure. Like, you so there was a few more that I told you, but I know we were strapped for time. So, well, we can always save them for the next time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <There you> <laughs> All right. Go. All right, Damon. Have a good day. I think uh, this is where we're going to end this. So, where can they find us? They can find us on Instagram at for the booze underscore podcast and on Facebook at for the booze. You can also find us on X or Twitter whatever the kids call it these days, uh, For the Booze. You can find us on YouTube at For the Booze. Video's coming, I promise. Uh, Twitter, or uh, not Twitter, TikTok. You already did that. I know, mm -hmm. TikTok. Just look up For the Booze. We're there. Just, We're just, everywhere. Just find us. And also, if you have a listener story or suggestion for a location that you'd like us to do, for the booze 12 at gmail.com. And one more very important thing. Rate and review. We need them. Please. Please and thank you. Thank it's you. not for our egos, I promise. And shout out to the Patreons. We have Joe, Mr. You Matern. Yes. And uh, Teresa O'Donnell. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you both, our little Patreon producers. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, babe. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for listening. And we will see you in the next one. <gasps> Bye. Bye. If you don't go watch his stuff, I will hunt you down and haunt you.